Hello, everyone. I'm Mary. Thanks for joining us today for the Billion Oyster Project Symposium and this virtual keynote and talks. Uh, today and tomorrow, I'll be presenting Reef Rocket, a reef module design and material prototype that I developed in partnership with the Billion Oyster Project for my master's thesis at the Pratt Institute. Just to share a bit about myself, I was born and raised in Northern California, where um, my love for nature began. I always preferred to be outside, to get dirty, and to understand the world around me by constructing my own little experiments within it. This curiosity instilled in me a deep respect and wonder for the natural world from a young age. It's this interest that led me to study biology and art and to integrate the two here in my pursuit of a master's degree at the Pratt Institute. Industrial design combines engineering, business, and art to design systems, services, and products for mass production. I'm interested in the future of design in the age of biology and the climate crisis. When I arrived here, I was totally overwhelmed by New York City. There's just an endless amount of art, music, food, and culture to consume and experience. But at the same time, I also felt disconnected uh, from the natural world. I looked around and realized that we're surrounded by nature here. The New York Harbor is our largest um, natural resource. It's just right here at our fingertips, but it's polluted and barren. Why aren't we engaging with and restoring the nature around us? The New York Harbor was once one of the world's largest and most biodiverse ecosystems. The engineer of this glorious sanctuary was the Eastern oyster. These oysters were a favored food and a huge part of the New York economy. Oysters filter and purify water. One oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water a day. They're an indicator species and a proxy for environmental contamination. With the loss of the oyster reef, we've lost biodiversity in our harbor, suffered more severe impacts from hurricanes and flooding, and have misplaced our connection with the now polluted New York waterways. Looking forward, these impacts on human health will become more severe due to global warming and the continued loss of biodiversity and marshlands. That's why we're on a mission to restore a billion oysters to the New York Harbor by 2035. To reach this goal, our community of volunteers and scientists are fabricating and monitoring artificial oyster reefs through public education and stewardship initiatives. Reef Rocket is a modular reef structure designed for citizen science monitoring and restoration. The modules can be fabricated on site and easily installed, transported, and monitored by individuals. This project improves upon existing structures and was co-designed with diverse stakeholders, including students, scientists, fabricators, and the oysters themselves. Reef Rocket is a tool that can be used as an educational reef surveyed by non-experts for environmental monitoring, promoting oyster health, and encouraging engage engagement across ages with the natural world. After storms, reefs are buried in sediment, which suffocate the oysters. We expanded upon the traditional dome-shaped reef structure, elongating it to elevate the oysters and habitats above sediment on a heavy base. This protects and shelters both the internal habitat and the external surface where oysters attach and grow. It was critical that the reef could be stacked like a disc on rebar to stabilize elevated structures against wave energy while still providing enough space for the oysters to grow to maturity. To do this, we expanded the surface area of the reef disc and made the modular components easy to identify, survey, and lift. We tested the height and weight to ensure it's heavy enough to withstand wave energy while ergonomically handled, retrieved, and transported. Reef Rocket includes a stopper and GPS tracking device that can be used to monitor and tag habitats mounted off docks and piers. Mounted to a rope, Reef Rocket can be easily retrieved and monitored. And the individual modules can be stacked on rebar to form a living breakwater and artificial tide pool, 
or installed along a pier to create a living seawall. Oysters can help us understand the quality of life underwater. Reef Rocket serves as a biological monitor. With simple tools like calipers, we can survey the growth of oysters and biodiversity annually to assess the success of the reef and the health of the ecosystem. So this will build upon the existing work of the Billion Oyster Project, engaging students and the public in the restoration of our shared resources. Reef Rocket prototypes the use of biocement to grow natural reef structures. I was inspired by the oyster's natural ability to grow cement without industrial processes or material, replacing the metal, Portland cement, and plastic reef structures we're currently using. Oysters are able to build elaborate reef structures by secreting calcium carbonate, forming layers of shells that accumulate over time. The cement they produce is strong enough to withstand wave energy and corrosive salt water for thousands of years. Think of this oyster as a tiny factory and compare that to the enormous energy and resources required to create man-made cement. During this project, we learned how to grow cement the same way an oyster does. We harness technology from the ocean to facilitate and expedite the natural process of growing cement. <laughs> Biologically grown cements mimic the calcium carbonate rich surface and texture of the oyster shell, making it the ideal medium for oyster restoration. In nature, reef structures form over millennia. This process expedites the growth of calcite material, providing long-lasting cement ideal for oyster growth in under a week. And it's grown by microorganisms. So at this point, you might be wondering, how does an industrial designer begin to understand the details of how nature is able to construct strong and durable material? My greatest learnings were through hands-on experimentation with the process of biomineralization, the natural technique through which shells are formed. I started by using aquatic microorganisms to grow calcium carbonate akin to the oyster shell. The process of growing cement requires combining packed sand, liquid solution, and a calcium source in a mold. I grew cement by pouring solutions with bacteria, microalgae, and enzymes over a bed of sand and repeating the process for nine days. As you can see, this process is distinctly different from how we produce materials today. In fact, I like to think that it's most similar to the irrigation systems we use to grow plants. Using this methodology, I made hundreds of material samples under different conditions to grow cement around crushed sand, oyster shells, and glass. Through experimentations, I learned the restrictions of mold making with this natural process and how to treat nature as an active contributor to the output of the design process. Finally, I discovered a material and growth process I was most happy with. To my surprise, I had the most success growing cement from beans. Um, jack beans are nitrogen fixing and can be grown globally. These magic beans are home to cement producing enzymes that combined with a calcium source, which I extracted from oyster shells, produced cement. It seems almost too perfect that, kind of like Jack and the Beanstalk, we're turning beans into oyster reefs. The next step was to learn exactly how I achieved this output so I could scale the specific sample and replicate the process over and over again. We iterated, tested, and improved upon the design and process to create bio-cement prototypes that optimize the growth of cement as well as the compatibility of the surface for oysters. The rib surface maximizes surface area and mimics the natural body of the oyster shell. At the same time, it channels the flow of solution through substrate, enforcing the strength of the cement and efficiency of the process. Compared to the energy intensive process of making Portland cement, biologically grown cement sequesters carbon, utilizes waste streams, and locally renewable resources and grows at room temperature. Where standard cement extracts and pollutes, biocement regenerates. What's more, biocement cures in just three to nine days versus Portland cement's 28 day cure time. This is significant because Portland cement is the most used material on earth besides water. 
While cement has helped us build our cities, it's strained our environment in the process. Nature can produce material with greater strength than man-made processes and with less energy without polluting the surrounding environment. Due to the rapid depletion of our fossil fuel resources, we're forced to look into sustainable alternatives to how we make material. Looking towards the future, we need resilient material like cement that can withstand extreme climate. This is why we're employing nature in the design and manufacturing process to create a future where we can live in harmony with natural systems while engaging everyday people in building a resilient future and activating the potential of nature. Here's how. We're planning to install and test the success of the reef rocket to recruit oysters locally off piers and docks as a living seawall and a breakwater and artificial tide pool in shallow waters. We'll continue to collaborate with the Billion Oyster community with the goal of co-designing to bring life and the ecological and material services oysters offer closer to our cities. Looking forward, Reef Rocket is a vital tool in a system of naturally grown reef structures. To achieve the goal of restoring a billion oysters to our harbor, we need tools for surveying marine climates, as well as large permanent structures for long-term reef restoration and natural carbon sinks. This is me again at the beach collecting shells and wondering how something so durable and ornate could be a product of the ocean. This fascination and curiosity has stayed with me. Perhaps there's some of the same curiosity for nature like this in each of us. Industrial design responds to advancements in science and the needs of society. Following the 19th and 20th century of physics that enabled the industrial revolution, we're now in the age of biology. Thank you.